Commercial space. Some of the commercial space types that we've talked about in previous episodes are offices. You want to learn more? Stay tuned. Hello, my name is Fadi Kuder. I'm a local realtor with Sutton Group Ottawa. And if you like what you see, please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe. Hit that bell icon so you can get more and more episodes about this. And do not forget to comment. Let's talk about offices and office commercial space. Offices are one type of real estate investments that are specifically commercial, mainly for a white collar business and some blue collar business as well. There are many different types of office buildings that you can go out and, and look into. And we're gonna start with types of real estate assets that these offices are. And most of the time are, you know, you're looking at a type A, type B, type C, and that actually gets determined. We'll cover that in another video, but that gets determined by the age of the building, the amenities that it has, the location it has, and so on and so forth. Let's dig into the different types of offices. Something called Central Business District or CBD. What these are, you know, those are big high rise buildings that are like downtown, for example, for federal governments. If you're looking at around downtown Ottawa, you know, you're looking at possibly the uh, around the parliament, uh, buildings that are on Sparks, buildings that are on uh, Bank Street. And what we're talking about here are multi layer buildings, multi, you know, high rise with elevators, security the whole nine yards. 161, for example, 161 Elgin is a perfect example for that. What tends to happen with these, a lot of the times you're gonna have maybe one or two major sort of big offices that are renting the space. Sometimes it might be the whole building. For example, if you look at Shopify, the whole building is for Shopify. Type two is commercially zoned homes. What these are, as you guessed, they're actually older homes that are zoned now as office space. So those are normally for service type business. It could be, you know, your architect. It could be sometimes a small doctor's office, dentist's office, that kind of stuff. Sometimes actually just a blue, blue collar business. It could be like a service business, a science business. Sometimes it might be any sort of business, if you will, that doesn't necessarily require massive space or massive sort of warehousing. Go with it where they're, you know, maybe delivering service. I've seen some that are actually, for example, kitchen designers. Seen some that are, you know, snow removal companies, but they don't necessarily have the warehouse there. So that kind of stuff that could tend to be commercially zoned homes that now become offices. And you'll see these on the outskirts or in the suburbs. And a lot of the times, obviously much better for these offices because they're not necessarily paying downtown rates. They're not pay, you know, worrying about the traffic. They're not necessarily worrying about space itself. There's lots of parking. And most of the time it tends to be a single use, meaning it's just one office owning that home. Type three is medical offices. So those are one very, very specific. So I'll give you an example. This could be, for example, a surgeon's office. Could be a plastic surgeon, actually. I've seen a few in Canada where it's the whole building is set up as a medical office. These ones tend to have a ton of upgrades, a ton of updates, lots of plumbing, lots of lighting, and very specific. In fact, some of these costs per square foot tend to be higher. Sometimes it might be on the two, $300 per square foot because it's very specialized. For example, they might have a surgery room. They might have uh, things like a sanitation unit. They might have a specific sort of kitchen requirements, you know, that kind of stuff. And the cool thing about those ones, if you are the landlord, they most of the time they tend to be long-term because obviously to get up and, and go find another medical facility, to outfit it the same way, it's gonna cost you a ton more. I'll give you a very, very simple example. One of my friends actually owns a plastic surgeon office and it did cost him a little roughly around 1.5 million to outfit the building and purchase it. So that's a lot of money when you're looking at a small little house that they've turned into a medical office. Type four is the suburban office buildings. So these ones tend to be a little bit around the low rise. Most of the time they're just outside of the city zone, if you will. Uh, they're just a little outside of the downtown core. For here, for Ottawa, picture, you know, places like around Saint Laurent Boulevard, places around uh, Terrence Matthews. Uh, you know, those are, most of the time, they're a small little complex with maybe two or three buildings, low rise, two or three uh, levels, and it's got tons and tons of offices that are not necessarily looking at paying a ton of premium, if you will, going downtown. Uh, they want that traffic. They don't necessarily want the heavy traffic. They don't necessarily want to be caught in rush hours. A lot of the times they tend to have, you know, uh, the folks that work there tend to live close by as well too. The cool thing about these is that they are a little bit easier to find, a little bit easier to rent. And most of the time they're a little bit on the riskier side for investors because again, you know, it's less risky, you know, it doesn't cost as much and it's easier to outfit as well. So there you have it. Those are the four types of, of office space that you can lease. My name is Fadi Kuder. For more videos like this, please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe and hit the bell icon so you can get more and more episodes about this. Thanks again. See you soon.